All right. Well, we are ready to take off now. I want to share with you again some really, really cool stuff that I think is going to blow your mind. You know, if you're brand new to real estate and you've never done a real estate deal in your life, or maybe you're an intermediate or even a, an advanced savvy pro that's been doing this for a long time, I think through the course of this video and the next ones to come, uh, you're, you're, you're going to get benefit and value. And my goal really is to share with you how to double, triple, or even quadruple the amount of leads that you get and the amount of deals that you're putting under contract and selling each month and also your profits uh, on a yearly basis. And the way I'm going to do that is really just kind of help you mind for the gold. Um, if you have a lot of leads already and you're kind of doing things in the more traditional way, then this is going to be a great first video for you to watch because it's going to share with you how to put some of the leads that you might be throwing away to use and to profit. If you're brand new and you don't even know how to create leads for your business, um, this is gonna be a great way for you to learn how to structure business uh, for yourself each month, each day, each year uh, that will help you when you do get leads. And I'll show you how to get leads uh, no matter what level you're at. I'll show you how to... <laughs> What I'm going to be sharing with you as far as leads is probably the most exciting part, frankly, uh, because you're, you're, you're just going to be in a position, a posture that will allow you to um, say yes or say no to leads and never chase, beg, or plead with anybody uh, to do business with them again or uh, if you've never done business um, ever. So sit back, uh, turn off Facebook or close out Facebook, I guess. Close out your email, turn off your uh, cell phone, close the door, lock yourself in, uh, put your earphones on, you know, whatever you got to do, put yourself in the, in the vault, in the, in the soundproof room, and uh, sit tight, because what I'm going to be sharing with you is going to be really cool. I think you're going to really, really enjoy it, okay? So uh, let's dive into it now. Traditional wholesaling versus non-traditional wholesaling. Wholesaling, um, you know, is essentially buying low and selling high. There's different ways to structure uh, wholesale real estate investing. Again, if you're a savvy pro, you already know all this, but I want to speak to maybe my brand new folks um, who are not familiar with what this is. And the question would be is which approach to real estate investing is right for you? So you've got traditional wholesaling where you're finding typically distressed property and usually you're kind of forced to make lots of lowball offers to sellers in need, right? An example would be where a house is worth $100,000, but maybe the seller is distressed. Maybe they're behind in their payments, um, they've lost their job, or uh, the breadwinner of the home has lost their job or died, and um, they're getting behind. And you realize that this property is worth $100,000 but you also recognize that they're in a situation where they've got to move and, and maybe they'd be willing to accept less than that. So you offer $50,000 to $70,000, you know, thirty dollars to $50,000 less than what it's worth. And, uh, you know, you hope that uh, you're able to get uh, a deal like this. Now, the, the challenge, of course, is naturally a homeowner, regardless of their situation, usually wants their full asking price, right? They feel that their house is worth what they're asking. Sometimes what they're asking is way too much. In fact, most of the time what they're asking is way too much. But, you know, that's why you do lots of lowball offers. In fact, some folks will do 100 of those to get 10 people that are interested to make three offers to get one to close. So a 10, you know, 100, 10, 3, 1, kind of a, a ratio or process to do that. What I'm going to be sharing with you is really kind of the opposite of that, um, where you can get one out of three sellers to say yes, and you're not having to make more, you know, if you were to make 10 uh, offers, you'd get three to say uh, yes and close one. So, you know, a fraction of what you have to do with this particular approach. So again, what you, the way you structure this is you, you essentially say that the seller accepts your offer. Let's say they accept it for $50,000, right? It's worth 100, but they're accepting it for 50,000. Well, what you would do is you would repackage the price at fifty-five thousand, right? You'd add five thousand dollars on top of that, and then you'd go out and find a cash buyer wanting a property with some equity and some potential cash flow, right? So the cash uh, cash buyer uh, doesn't want to spend a whole lot of time talking to sellers on the phone, but they do have some cash, looking for a home for that cash, 
And what do you know? You've got a deal where that would make sense. So where even though you know you bought the property for fifty thousand, uh, at least contractually you bought it, right? Or maybe you know you got to do a do double closing and all kinds of other stuff uh, that we won't get into this video, but uh, is really kind of required when you're doing the tr traditional uh, wholesaling. But let's say you lock it up, you you contractually get this deal under contract for fifty thousand. You add five thousand to it because that's your profit, and so now you're going to resell this property for fifty five thousand to a cash buyer. So the cash buyer gives you fifty five thousand dollars, and you give the seller that you were originally working with $50,000, which means you get to keep the difference of $5,000 for yourself. That's your profit, right? That's your traditional wholesale type of a deal. Again, while this approach does work, and uh, you know, as you can imagine, there are lots of hurdles that you'd have to jump over in order to find sellers willing to do this, such as the fact that you're lowballing the seller. <laughs> Right, you know, they grew, they they uh, raised their three children, little Johnny, little Timmy, and uh, little S uh, Samantha, in their house, and so for them, the house is worth really, it's worth a million. So they're th in their mind, they're giving you a good deal at a hundred thousand, right? So here you come saying, I'll give you fifty thousand, right? So it's insulting to a lot of people. It insults them, and so that's why you've got to go through a hundred different properties like that. Um, you know, kind of cold calling is usually the, the traditional way to do it, right? Or through networking events or maybe through putting out signs like the bandit signs, the illegal bandit signs that people put out, right? They hang them up over the weekend. Um, usually because if you did it Monday through Friday, you, they get taken down and you get a call from the city who's about to fine you for doing that. So those are the usual ways that people do it. So what they'll do is they'll put these ugly yellow signs up, which actually work. They actually get calls. But you got to hang them up, um, you know, through the weekend, so that you don't get those calls because the city's not working on Saturday and Sunday. And then on Sunday night, you got to, you know, Friday night you put them up, Sunday night you bring them down, and you get calls. We will buy, you know, we buy ugly houses or we buy we buy houses, whatever it says, and then it's got your phone number some or some eight hundred number on it, right? So that's part of the hurdles that you got to go through just to get your leads, and then you've got to basically tell sellers, look, I know you want a hundred thousand, but I'll give you fifty thousand. And so the you know the phone gets quiet and it's awkward and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, that's kind of your just the beginning of some of the hurdles that you got to go through. We'll go through a few of the other hurdles in a second. So again, seller has to be distressed uh, is a kind of a requirement. Uh, they've got to be willing to accept thirty to fifty percent off or thirty to fifty percent less than what their home is actually worth. Um, if the home needs repairs, you've got to calculate the cost in the time to make those repairs. And naturally what you want to do is you want to do what's called the ARV, the after repair value, where you say um, to a cash buyer, look, once we get these repairs done, man, this house is going to be worth so much more. And here's why I think that based on comparable properties, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, just a, it's definitely good profitability if you know how to do that and if you know how to make it work. Um, and if you know how to convince a cash buyer to agree with your calculations, it can be advantageous. But I'm going to show you something far, far simpler that I've been doing for the last eight years and didn't have to leave my house to do it. Didn't have to put any of my own cash or credit into it. You don't even need a license for it um, because you're acting as a principal. You're representing yourself. You're not representing other people. But we'll get into all that in a second. So anyway, you've got to find these cash buyers, right? And um, you know they've got to see the house after it's repaired, and they've got to be, um, you know, they got to know what it's going to be worth after all that's done, and decide will it be worth enough to make sense for their portfolio, right? So based off of your calculations, they've got to determine whether it's going to be a fit for them or not. The home uh, usually needs to provide the cash buyer with positive cash flow. That's what they're hoping to do. Most cases, cash buyers are looking to buy and hold. They may be looking to flip it also themselves, but usually they want to you know, make it a part of their entire portfolio. And so looking for something that's going to cash flow positive, which means that after uh, the uh, rent and all expenses are paid, money is still left over that comes into their pocket, which creates cash flow. And then you'll usually need to involve banks or hard money lenders, which are expensive 
lenders that charge you super high interest rates and if you don't pay them on time or you don't pay them at all they take the house or maybe private money lenders could be your mom could be your dad could be your grandpa or it could just be somebody who's looking to put their saved up money into something uh, that's going to make them a better return uh, you got to look for the hard money uh, type deals private money or conventional bank uh, money to fund your deals along with the cost to hire an attorney to close the actual deal Again, this can and is done, but it can be a headache and even a nightmare when things go south. So this is why, you know, I'm looking at, when I'm looking at getting into business, I want to I want to find the easiest way possible, right? I, I want to find the lowest hanging fruit. I don't want to, I don't want too many hurdles because the more hurdles I've got to run to, the higher my risk goes up, right? Now things are more risky for me and I'm taking a bigger chance. I've got I've got to talk to a lot of sellers. I've got to basically spend a lot of time, uh, you know, getting beat up uh, just to get a deal. And then I've got to go get beat up by banks with high interest rates or high requirements and all that kind of stuff. And then get maybe beat up by cash buyers who say my evaluation of what the property is going to be worth after it's repaired is wrong. And who knows? You know, all kinds of different challenges. You got to go, uh, you know, the city getting upset at you for putting bandit signs up or whatever. Um, so anyway, this is going to be all kind of the opposite of doing that. So what I want to show you today, again, is much easier. It's risk-free, risk free, easy for me to say, risk-free way to invest in real estate without risking any of your own cash or credit. So there is no banks. There's no credit check at all. I get asked that actually earlier today by somebody who said, hey, I've got bad credit. Can I still do this? And I'm like, we, I have not had my credit checked in the last eight years, uh, ever. Uh, I don't fill out applications. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. In fact, um, what I'll be sharing with you in, in these video trainings is is going to sound like, no, nah, it can't be that easy. It really is. And, you know, for those that don't believe it, hey, wish you the best. Um, definitely stick with what, what everybody else is doing um, that is super hard. But uh, for those that do suspend their disbelief, even so ever temporarily, I think you're going to be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. So... Hang tight. So what I want to introduce to you is something that you may be familiar with, you may be an expert at, or you may have heard about this for the very first time. That's creative seller financing. No money down, real estate investing. And my two favorite property owner avatars, meaning the two types of property owners I like to work with to make what I'm going to share with you work, the easiest way without insulting anybody, without upsetting anybody, is a landlord or a property owner who wants to sell their property uh, for sale by owner. So the landlord is just looking to rent the property. They know that they either, if they want to uh, get their needs met, they've either got to rent it or uh, uh, if they wanted to sell it down the line, they have to sell it in a conventional way uh, by hiring realtors. And then your for sale by owner just is somebody who is, you know, your mom and pop who wants to sell their own property. So land, landlords and FISBOs, right? How to solve their problems and get paid $5,000, $10,000 on each deal or more, all the way up to like $25,000. So in order to help them, you've got to know what they want and what they need, right? Once you figure that out and once you decide and, and learn how to give it to them, this becomes super, super easy. So the landlord either wants a renter or the for sale by owner wants a buyer. The landlord wants somebody who's not going to destroy their property or if it's a for sale by owner, they want somebody who'll buy their property at their full asking price. The landlords want a renter that will pay on time and won't destroy their house, right? They hate the idea of being a landlord because they've got to fix toilets and leaky roofs. They got to do it on the weekend. You know, the tenant calls them Saturday night, Sunday night, and says, hey, my toilet is not working or my roof is leaking, come and fix it. So the landlord's got to drive, you know, get in the, in the pickup truck and drive on down there and go fix it. Many, however, are open to selling their homes in the next five years or less. But in their mind, the way that they're thinking about selling their home is hiring a realtor, right? Paying 6% commissions and then hiring a realtor to sell their property. 
The for sale by owner person thinks about, you know, hates the idea of paying these realtors a 6% commissions. They just hate that idea. They think, hey, this is my equity. I worked hard for it. I put all this money into the property. Why should I give you 6%, right? If it's a $300,000 house, that's 18 grand that they've got to pay just for the realtor commissions, which the for sale by owner guy or gal feels that the realtor didn't earn in the first place, right? Now, if you're a realtor, I'm not trying to be offensive to you. I used to be a realtor with Keller Williams and Remax, but um, let's face it, the homeowner who ultimately becomes their for sale by owner just doesn't think that a realtor is worth their commission. Plus, you've got to pay one and a half to two percent uh, in closing costs. So, they're, you know, they're they're in for seven and a half to eight percent of uh, of the of the price of their home. And, and the idea of them doing that just makes them want to puke. So they're that's why they've ultimately decided to become a FISBO for sale by owner. Again, they want their full asking price. And they usually want to sell fast. Um, they're selling for some reason, right? They either um, want to move out of state, got a new job, or again, maybe there was a death in the family and the primary uh, bread earner uh, is no longer able to make the payment, so they've got to sell this house. But again, the idea of selling and paying commissions makes them want to vomit. The other reason is... Um, Maybe they're okay with paying commissions, but they can't. There's no equity in the property, right? A uh, house is worth $300,000, but uh, the seller owes $310,000. So they're upside down, right? They owe more than it's worth. Well, these tactics actually work, even when they owe more than it's worth, believe it or not. Um, especially when you're selling a property for sale by owner with creative seller financing, you can actually sell at 10 to 20% above what it's worth because you're selling on terms. And so this is uh, why I love this approach. You don't, not only do you not have to, not only do you not have to offer 30 to 50% off of what the seller wants, but you can actually offer 10 to 20% more than what they want and still make money. And I'll, and I'll show you how to do that. So most FISBOs cannot sell their property as fast as they want or at all. The reality is, is FISBOs are not realtors, they're not trained in this, and they're not trained in marketing, all that kind of stuff, and so most of them fail. I think it's like 80% plus that fail at trying to sell their property rent, um, trying to sell their property for sale by owner. So here is the perfect offer for both, both the landlord and the for sale by owner. So what I typically do is I'll say, listen, we can either sell your property rent to own, right? So if I'm talking to a landlord, they're already renting it, right? So if they want to sell, if they hate the idea of being a landlord, then we can do a rent to own. You're already renting it. Let's do a rent to own or seller financing uh, for the landlord also or for the for sale by owner who's like, look, I mean, let's face it. The, the for sale by owner would prefer to get cash today. They, they really want to get all their money today. But if they can't sell their property at all, or at least not as fast as they would like to, something's better than nothing. And so when you introduce this idea to them, which is usually not introduced to them by anybody else, especially not by realtors, because most realtors are not trained in this, which that, 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 guys, that means that's good. That's what you want. That's, that means you've got a niche business where you have very little competition. For the last eight years, I have enjoyed extremely small competition. Whereas when I was a realtor and a mortgage broker, I had tons of competition, right? You had to do my, I had to compete with other realtors to get the business. Here, I don't compete with anybody. Uh, and not just because of, we have the perfect offer here, but because of all the other cool stuff that you're going to learn if you stick tight with us and watch the other videos. And I don't know why you wouldn't, but um, you're, you're just going to be blown away and you'll see why having this niche business in this unique, little known or almost unknown strategies uh, give you this huge competitive advantage. So you either offer rent to own to the landlord or for sale by owner or to sell with seller financing, like on a land contract or a contract for deeds. Really, it's really kind of the same thing, uh, but just called differently depending on the state. Then you're able to offer them their full asking price. And like I alluded to earlier, you can even offer them sometimes a little bit more, you know, if in exchange for terms, in exchange for time. So you can, you, you can offer a little bit higher if they're willing to give you a little bit longer time 
uh, with them being the bank, right? So instead of the buyer, the end buyer, the person that we're going to sell contracts to, um, instead of them having to uh, go and get a traditional bank loan, the owner of this property is the bank. They're going to be the bank. And um, if they're willing to give us a little bit more time, we're willing to give them a little bit more price, uh, ultimately coming from, again, the end buyer who I'm going to assign contracts to. The contracts are called an option agreement, the option to buy or the option not to buy, right? So, um, you know, when I'm doing a rent to own, that's what it's called, the option agreement, and I want to assign those. And those contracts are worth money, five, 10, up to 25 grand for those contracts assuming all the other variables are in place, meaning the house is uh, a great house, in a great market, all that kind of stuff. So the other component of the perfect offer for both landlord and for sub owner is to structure the deal to where they pay no commissions or fees ever, but you still profit, right? So we talked about kind of how to add your fee into it, and we'll talk more about um, how to structure that down the line. Uh, I believe in the next video, you'll be learning um, exactly how to do that, how to make offers the way I'm talking about, how to structure them, and even how to talk to the sellers, which is going to be cool. Um, I'll show you some stuff that's going to, you're going to love. You're going to, it'll blow your mind. You also can make the end buyer responsible for the first $5,000 or more, depending on the purchase price, uh, in any kind of repair. So the landlord who hates repairing properties loves to hear this because they no longer have to repair, right? In fact, you have the end uh, tenant buyer in that case responsible for the first $5,000 in any kind of repair. So the landlord doesn't have to be. Same thing for the FISBO. FISBO doesn't want to become a landlord, right? The first guy is a landlord. The, the second guy, the FISBO, doesn't want to become a landlord. They want to move out of state. They don't want to fly back and forth to fix stuff in the house. So when you tell them, look, we'll make the end buyer who we're going to assign the contracts, which is going to have your full price and your terms on it, awesome, right? Is going to be even responsible for the first $5,000 in repairs. Awesome. And even more so, we're going to have the, the home sold as is. So if you've put a lot of money into it, you don't want to invest any more money into it, guess what? You don't have to. We're going to sell it as it is, and it'll be the responsibility for the end buyer to fix it up. So for the landlord, that's awesome because if they, if the, the tenant buyer, somebody who's going to rent with the option to buy, ultimately doesn't buy, they get the house, you know, the, the landlord gets the house back or the owner gets the house back. And, you know, maybe the, the tenant buyers fix it up a little bit, right? I mean, how cool is that? So uh, for the for sale by owner, same thing. They're, they're not having to put any money into it. And sometimes these folks will actually fix it up for them. And look, we're not taking advantage of the tenant buyer or the buyer, uh, depending on what you know kind of deal it is, because they're not having credit checks done. They're not having to go through banks. Usually, going to have a little bit smaller of a down to put. The house is going to be theirs um, before you know they're going to get the control as if it was theirs before they have to buy it. So they're getting they're getting hooked up hugely as well, right? So uh, everybody wins. If the seller prices the home right, you know, we let them know that they can sell this property start to finish within seven to 14 days. That's actually my average. And I've done it within six days, several times. Um, but usually my average is seven to 14 days if the seller prices the home right. They, if they price it wrong, it is not, you know, it could take seven to 14 months, right? Because they priced it wrong. So we just have to, we've got systems in place, stuff that we do. Um, that help them come back to planet Earth if they've overpriced their house. So, hope this is exciting you. I hope you're starting to get the idea. Listen, if it's not making you excited, check your pulse uh, because something might be wrong. And also know that there's a ton of cool stuff coming up. In fact, uh, we're going to be going over exactly how to make the perfect offer in writing and how to present it the right way so that one out of every three sellers says yes, not you know one out of every hundred, but one out of every three says yes. And again, you probably got an idea already why that is because we're giving them full asking price, we're making our buyers that we're gonna assign contracts to responsible for repairs, we're selling it as is. It doesn't cost them a dime uh, in commissions, no 6% commissions. 
you starting to get the idea? It's 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 a it's a no brainer uh, offer for the seller or you know for the property owner who can do this. Obviously, some folks are going to say, "No, I just need cash today," uh, which is going to be the majority of folks. But the reason why we've got a niche opportunity here is because uh, we're not trying to go after everybody. And when I show you how many leads we get on a daily basis, I mean hundreds, literally hundreds, and that's because I don't want to do more. Otherwise, I would have thousands. Um, you'll see that it's very, very easy to sort through the ones that are not a fit, go right to the ones that are, and put deals together. So I'm telling you, no matter what you do, please watch the next video. You're going to love it. Um, this is going to be huge. Just trust me on that, okay? So hopefully you've taken some good notes, and I shall see you tomorrow.